Now, if you like music to come in short, sharp bursts of perfect punk pop, the Undertones are the band for you. Their songs are a stream of startlingly positive adolescent anthems with the catchiest of choruses. Many of you will know their biggest hit, Teenage Kicks. It hasn't been out of my head all day. It has been described as the perfect single. Well, the Undertones are celebrating their 40th anniversary this year, and bass player Michael Bradley has written a book to mark the occasion. Michael is going to be joining us in a moment, of course, but first let's remind you of why the Undertones continue to be so influential. And Michael Bradley is with me now. Good to have you with us. Oh, thank Can you we right, start with Teenage Kicks? Because Sorry. it's such a famous song. And the DJ, uh, John Peel, many of you will know him, mm -hmm. said it was the best single ever made. And he is not alone. How does it feel to have made a song that people love so much, that has had such longevity? At the start, it was great, because it was the first record we ever made. We were still in Derry, Northern Ireland, where we lived. And then for the, the words, I'm going to say, the words best, DJ to instantly love your record is fantastic. But ever since then, you know, I always think that Teenage Kicks has taken on a life of its own. You know, because it's it, been remade. Yeah, uh, well, not even that. It's, it's, it's almost as much John Peel's record as it is ours, you know, which is a great feeling from our, our point of view. But uh, at the time, at the time, bizarrely, we, kind of, we weren't too happy with it. We thought it doesn't sound like all the records that we liked. But uh, in the years since, I can appreciate it as so you didn't think at the time, this is it, we have just made no, not a at <laughs> No, not at all. I remember we got the vinyl, you know, the black seven-inch vinyl. We played it in the record player in O'Neill's house, on the two O'Neill brothers in the band. That's where we basically hung out. And uh, on their record player that we'd heard all the great records that we loved. It doesn't sound as good as their, on their record player as, say, the Ramones' first LP. But that's, I think, as we were obviously too close to it, and we were just, we were very odd people as well, you know. What makes a great iconic song though and why do you think that Teenage Kicks has had this longevity? That's a good question. You know, I think it's, it's a lot to do with uh, the, a place and a time. Uh, 1978 was, you know, people were sort of starting to wake up to punk. Uh, obviously 1977 was a big year but by then, you know, p people liked tuneful records uh, and also, you, you said, short and, and sharp. That always helps with me as well. When you listen to music now, do you feel that it lacks a bit of rawness, that it's a bit overproduced? Some of it is. Some of it is, but at the same time, there are hundreds of great records being made still, which sound fantastic. You know, I think what's happened now, there's, <laughs> music is so big. Back then, in 1978, music was kind of small, but you could keep on, to on top of everything. Since then, there are hundreds of bands making thousands of records. You grew up in quite a brutal time, though, mm -hmm. during the Troubles, and the, the music is not mm. politically motivated. Yeah. Why not? Because we were inspired by the records. We were inspired by records from America, records from England. You know, we loved the Beatles, like everyone does. But we also loved, as I mentioned, the Ramones, the New York punk band. Uh, we liked Phil Spector records. We liked the Crystals and so on. So with, with us, because there were never any live bands coming to Northern Ireland. So with us, music just meant either the John Peel Show or records that 
lots of times you had to send away for. And know. did that feel like your only escapism? Things were so brutal on the street. You kind well, of maybe had football and music and well, not much else. That that is is true. You know, we love football as well, but no, not really, because we weren't really escaping from it because we still lived in Derry. You know, but I think. At that age, and I think for adults as well, you can com compartmentalise things. You, know, you can see that there are things happening in Northern Ireland. You can see things that were happening in the streets. Uh, but also, you, you have your own life, you know. Did you want to be famous? Oh, no. Not at all. No. I didn't know what I wanted. I just wanted to, to, I, I just wanted to be in the band with my friends because we were friends before we were in the band. So I just wanted to keep that going. And, uh, was it a bit of a did. mixed blessing, though, the fame? I mean, how did people see you in Northern Ireland? Uh, um, in terms of wanting the to be famous? The fact that you made it so big, it well, was pretty quick. At the start, yeah, at the start, it was, uh, it could be a little bit, uh, a little bit brutal because there were some guys in Derry, because the thing is, we, we never ever moved away from Derry. We would have come to London, of course, to, to make records and, and so on. And we would have played places, but whenever we weren't actually doing anything, we would always come back to Derry. And Fergal, especially the singer, Fergal was very noticeable. Noticeable, and some guys <laughs> in the streets in Derry would not take kindly to him. Not, they weren't, you know, critics or anything. They just hated the idea that someone like Fergal and like the rest of us were kind of famous and you know for just being in a punk band. <laughs> So, You've been hugely influential though, Michael, the band has been. How do you see your influences on other groups and on music over these decades? I think that's, that's a difficult one for me to, to, to answer because I always think that we were so much like other bands that surely anyone who's influenced by the undertones will be influenced by the bands that we were influenced by. But I, I, can, I can understand that because I do, I, I do read about that and I do hear records. I think what it is, it's that combination of punk with also with with having tunes and you know brevity is good as well but also there's for us the attitude was was quite important for me especially the attitude was quite important that we believed that punk rock ethos that the bands and the audience were the same were on the same level you know I later learned that not every band believed that. <laughs> Let me tell you, Michael, definitely every <laughs> band does not believe that. So yeah. good to have you with us. Congratulations on 40 years. Thank you. Thank you.